Now we're talking about old fashioned favourites, aren't we? Bread and butter pudding. And I'm sure all our mothers and grandmothers have made this, using up all the scrap pieces of bread. So you can use any bread you like. I've got these hot dog buns, which work really well for it. And the only reason I'm using these was because they were quarter price at my local supermarket. So I thought, fantastic. But you can use fruit bread, you can use anything. Look, you, you, you make up your mind, all your scraps that are left over, which is lovely. But today I'm doing a slightly fancier version, I must admit. Can't help myself, can I? And what I've got there in the base of my gratin dish, I've got some diced apricots and also some raisins. And on top of that, I'm gonna just drizzle a little bit of scotch. Now the scotch is optional, it really is. But my father used to love when my mother put, you know, she didn't do it for the kids when she did. She used to do a special one just for him with some scotch in, because he was a Scot, wasn't he? He was rather keen on the odd, the odd bit of scotch, he really was. Then we just grab our rolls and you can slice them fairly thickly if you like. I'm just gonna cut those in half. Leave the crusts on, everything like that, you know, because you, you put a custard over the top, well, sort of a custard anyway. And because of that, it moistens it. And that's what's so good about this as a leftover dish. Waste not, want not, isn't it, I call it. Now you do the butter on both sides, please. But a generous amount of butter, because it is bread and butter pudding. When I was a kid, my mother used a lot of butter on it. And because we had an arrangement in New Zealand where butter and cream and milk was subsidized because we were looking after the, the farmers. Right, so we want it up to about four fifths there, two medium eggs into a mixer and 65 grams of caster sugar. And while that's happening, I make a mix here of half a split vanilla bean, half a cup of milk, and half a cup of thickened cream into a pot with that split half vanilla bean, and we'll bring that to the boil. Now, I want this mix here, you know when you're making a sponge or anything like that, you want it to change color. Well, that's exactly what I'm after now. Right, our cream and milk has come to the boil. Pull out that vanilla bean. Now, I normally throw that into the, my sugar once it's, I wash it and dry it and put it into the sugar and it gives me a lovely vanilla sugar. Now, I just turn this down to low and we just add this cream milk mixture little by little. Just be careful because you don't want to curdle it because the, obviously that's hot. So don't just throw it in all at once. This used to be a real treat in our house. I'll tell you the other thing, which I must make for you one day, talking about old favourites, was a really old fashioned rice pudding. And my mother used to put a little dash of whiskey in that. As I said, my father was born in Scotland, so he, he liked whiskey. So she used to put a little dash of whiskey in that as well. And that was beautiful. And you know, it had, had that lovely crust, lots of whipped cream, nice and sweet. Oh. I'm getting a bit excited now. It's a long time ago since I've had a rice pudding or a bread and butter pudding, to be honest. But we used to serve bread and butter pudding at one of our restaurants, Tolano, many, many years ago. And it was so popular. It was one of our most popular dishes. Funny, you know, see, we, we, we have memories of when we were kids and how nice things were. I'm just going to put this in your way so I can finish that off. Sorry. Is, is the bottom of a pot clean? That's, <laughs> I'll get letters, I'll get emails from everyone saying, ah, oh, you dirty buggy, you don't clean your pot. Anyway, what I've got here is I've got an oven tray and I've got some newspaper on the bottom of that. The reason for the newspaper is it stops the custard from curdling, you know, getting too hot on the bottom. So there is a method in my madness. Now, the other thing this is, this is quite essential too, is that you actually strain that over the top. There is a reason for this, and if, if I knew what it was, I'd tell you. No, I'm kidding. Oh, my jokes. My daughter, Charlotte, says to me, my daughter, Charlotte, who I'm sure you've seen on the show, you know, in Healthy, Wealthy and Wise, and, and Huey's Cooking Ventures and things, you know, because she's been on it a lot. She's now 19. <laughs> Goodness. What happened? So just keep that down a bit, and we'll press it down as it cooks. Right. Next thing, some boiling water, once again to stop it curdling, up to about two thirds of the height, and then carefully into the oven, 180 degrees I've got the oven, and not too high, 
So I put the tray down a bit and we're going to cook that, oh, let's think, 30 to 35 minutes until it's nice and puffed. But keep an eye on it because you may have to push that bread down a bit because what happens is because I've got quite a lot of bread because I like the bread part of it and I don't want it just to be custard. So you may have to push it down a little. All right, guys, we're looking rather good here. Now, what I've got here now, we've got a nice little crust there, which I really like. I like it like this. If you don't, you can always push it underneath more. But I've got some apricot jam, which I've just melted, which I'm just going to put over the top. Gives a lovely extra flavor. I'm looking forward to this, guys. This is for me, of course. What can you do? But a little bit of icing sugar just to finish it off. It doesn't look half bad, does it? Now, to drink with it. My mates, Sasha and Danae, have suggested a Moscata it's from Femme Nouveau. Oh, that's fancy. <laughs> so yes, you could serve that. But my father, the sport man that he was, he was allowed a single malt with it. And he did enjoy single malt. And this one here is an Oshentoshen, which is 12 years old. And as my father always said, one ice block or one ice cube, whatever you want to call it, nothing else. So if you're a Scot, well, you just like good Scotch. A wee dram of Oshentoshen or any other good single malt would go beautifully with that bread and butter pudding. And if you're not a Scot, <laughs> the Moscato, which is, as I said, recommended by my mates at Salador. It's a nice wine. It'll go well with it too.